Hi everyone, good afternoon and welcome to the Generation Euro Students event final award ceremony. I am speaking to you live from the European Central Bank main building in Frankfurt and I am so looking forward to all the activities that we have planned for today and I want to know if you are as well, I want to know how are you all feeling about everything that will happen this afternoon including meeting President Lagarde later today. So while we are all settling in and joining the Zoom meeting, why don't you follow the instructions that you will see on the screen? You will shortly see a QR code that you should be able to scan and also a code number that you can type in using your smartphone or your tablet, whatever you prefer. And you will join a Mentimeter event. Well, you will see three different GIFs and I want you to select the one that best represent how you are feeling today day. Let's see uh, what's the vibe uh, in the room today, but I hope all of you are as excited as I am. I guess at least I find it quite a unique opportunity to be in such a big room full of so many students from different countries and also uh, different cultures. And I see the first results coming in and it's great to see that most of you are very positive about this, feeling great, excited, so I see we are at quite a good starting point. Um, in that case, I think I'll just get it started and move on with it. And I would like to, of course, very warmly welcome all of you, the National Central Bank's representatives joining us, all the teachers, and most importantly, all the students who are the true protagonists of this session. My name is Georgina Garriga Sanchez. At war I work at the communications department here at the European Central Bank, and I am very happy to be moderating this session and also the award ceremony later with you and President Lagarde. Uh, but before we get there, I would like to give the floor now to Wolfgang Preussel, Director General of the Communications Department here at the ECB. Hi, Wolfgang, good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Dear students and teachers, on behalf of the European Central Bank, it is my pleasure to welcome you virtually to this year's Generation Euro Student Award live from the European Central Bank in Frankfurt. My name is Wolfgang Preussel, and I'm in charge of communications here at the ECB. Let me extend my warmest congratulations to you for succeeding in the final round of your national competition. Your being here today is the proof of the great work and dedication that all of you have poured into this competition over the past months. Even in these difficult circumstances due to the pandemic, you succeeded in achieving this together, and this applies to the students but also, of course, to the teachers who are here. We call you the Generation Euro in this competition because most of you will have grown up knowing only the Euro as your currency. But the Europe that we have today is a great achievement that goes way beyond the Euro and economics. We should not take that for granted. Especially in times of the pandemic, it can sometimes be challenging to work together to find shared solutions and to help each other while also respecting our cultural differences. Despite, the, the, despite these challenges, this forces us to set aside limiting beliefs and focus on the fundamental things that we all share. It, is, it shows us that Europe is stronger, safer, and can achieve more when we work together towards a shared vision, even in times when communication is mainly online that we can all come together today from so many different locations within Europe is really great. Let me add a little personal note with regards to the Generation Euro. I'm a father of two daughters. They are 18 and 20 years old. My wife is French, so my daughters are Franco-German. My older daughter was born almost exactly at the same time when the Euro coins and bills were introduced, my younger daughter 20 months later. For them, European currencies are something they only know from the history books or from the little tin box that we had at our house. When my girls were small, I had this tin box in which I kept some coins of German marks or French francs or Spanish pesetas and some other coins. They played with these coins. And when I told them that you had to change money each time when you went from Germany to Belgium 
or to France, they looked at me in disbelief. They have never known another world than the one where you pay in Euro, whether you are in Rome, in Vienna, in Athens, or in Helsinki. So they're also part of the Generation Euro. And perhaps in a couple of years, they will also participate in this beautiful Generation Euro Student Award that we are all here for today. And now I wish you a nice afternoon, a lot of fun at the Meet and Connect event. I hope you will get to know each other, make friends, and even learn a little bit more about our work here at the ECB. Thank you and enjoy your time here with us. Thank you very much, Wolfgang. I couldn't agree more with you. And indeed, I hope that this is a fun event for all of us. But I feel like by now we have spoken too much and it's your turn now. We want to hear from you. And I know that each of the teams has prepared a short presentation to let us know a little bit more about all your hometowns. So what we will do now is I will call out the speaker for each team. And whenever I do that, you can um, turn on your camera and unmute your your microphone so that we can hear your presentation but to make sure that we have time for everything let's keep this short and ideally no longer than one minute per team so without further ado let's get started with the first team on our list which is the team Chateau Chapeau from Germany please turn your cameras on so that we can see all your faces and I will ask Paula to unmute yourself and let us know a little bit more about your hometown Uh, so I'd like to uh, <laughs> introduce you my teammate Mia, who will present this presentation. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm going to tell you a bit about our, our hometown. Um, we go to a boarding school, um, which is located in the Rheingau, um, which is near Frankfurt and is famous for its vineyards and so on, which you can see in the middle picture uh, as a top tourist attraction. Um, a typical local food for Frankfurt is um, Grisos, as we pronounce it, which is called green, uh, green sauce, which is typically eaten with eggs and potatoes. And um, a famous person we chose is um, Goethe, which most of you hopefully know, who was a famous poet and so on, and who was born in Frankfurt and raised in Frankfurt. Thank you so much. This was very nice. And I will ask now to turn on the cameras of our second team members, who are the Irish team, Bentotene. Uh, where are you? Let us see you. Please turn your cameras on. And I am going to ask Garrett to unmute himself so that we can also hear his presentation. Um, hello, all. Um, this is the Irish team, Team Bentotene. As you can see here on the left is our local food, the Irish stew. Um, with some mutton and potatoes. And then our tourist attraction here is the Giant's Causeway, which is supposedly built um, by Irish giants. However, it's just cracked lava cooling. And then the third person, our famous person, is a person from our school, Belvedere College, who is an ex-pupil and a former president or Taoiseach of our country, um, Garrett Fitzgerald. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks to you, that was super nice and it's also very nice to see you all together um, on camera. Uh, moving on to our next team, it's Mr. Euro from Spain. Uh, please let us see you, turn your cameras on as well and let's hear Beatriz explain a little bit more about their hometown. Yeah, so good afternoon, we are team Mr. Euro from Spain and uh, we are all very passionate about economics and most of us are going to take um, economy related degrees next year in different universities. And we are from Castellón, which is a city located on the east coast of the country. And we have both like the sea, but also like rocky mountains and green areas. Um, many members of our community have raised, like have rise to, to fame. And one of them is um, Roberto Bautista, which is a world-class uh, tennis player. Um, here in our zone, uh, we are like the home to the probably most famous Spanish dish, which is paella. And we cook paella in like the traditional way with a variety of different recipes that we have passed on for generations. So yeah, nice to be here. Thank you so much, Beatriz. 
You truly live in a very, very nice city. Thanks a lot for this. Um, but let's now welcome our next team, the team Eurofil from France. Please turn your cameras on so that we can see you. And Lea, go ahead whenever you are ready. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, we are the winning team from France uh, and we are a group of three economics enthusiasts. Uh, we are in our last year in uh, of the secondary school and our school is in Anime, the biggest town of the Ardèche department and quite a small town. So as you can see on the template, our full specialty is a chestnut spring, so used as a spread and it's exquisite uh, with crepes. Uh, also, our major uh, tourist attraction is the Chauvet Cay, so considered uh, one of the most significant prehistorical art sites, part of the UNESCO World Heritage. And finally, there's not so much famous people from Ardèche, mm -hmm. but you might have heard of the Mongolfier brothers, who invented the Mongolfier style hot hair balloons and in the 18th century. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Lea. Thanks, thanks to all of you. This is actually very nice because I feel like we are all learning um, many different things from, from all the countries. So this is truly interesting. And now let's see what our Italian friends have to tell us. Let's welcome the Rossetti project team. Uh, please turn your cameras on as well so that we can see you clearly. And Luca, please go ahead and present us a little bit about your hometown. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Luca from Liceo Scientifico Rossetti, and we are so excited to be here today. Our city, San Benedetto del Tronto, rises on the shores of the Adriatic Sea, and it is one of the best promenades in all Italy. Our main tourist attraction is our seashore, what we call Riviera delle Palme. And as you can see in the photo, it is full of palm trees. There's also a cycle path, and San Benedetto includes over 300 establishments for visitors and the tourists from all over the world. Our typical food are olive alla scolana, so stuffed olives, little meatballs of fresh and cured meats wrapped in the flesh of green olives before being coated with breadcrumbs and then fried. And they are our region most renowned finger food and street food. And as a famous person, we put in the presentation Giovanni Allevi, which is one of the greatest composers composers in the current international panorama. It is um, such a pleasure to be here and we are looking forward to hearing from all of you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Luca. The pleasure is all ours. That was super nice to see your city as well. And now I am going to give the floor to the European team from Luxembourg. Please turn your cameras on as well. And this time I will give the floor to Margot. Margot, please unmute yourself and head whenever you're ready. Hello. So we are the team uh, Europeans from Luxembourg. So uh, our typical food here in Luxembourg is called the Jout Mat Garde Bonen. And it's actually a dish of smoked pork color and broad beans with some potatoes, which is one of the most widely recognized uh, national dishes of Luxembourg. So then the uh, extra a monument is called the Gullefra, and it's actually a monument of remembrance. And the centerpiece is about 21 meters tall. So it's dedicated to the thousands of Luxembourgers who volunteered for service in the armed forces of the Allied powers during both world wars and the Korean War. And then finally, our, um, our special personality is the Grand Duke. So since the 7th of October 2000, the Grand Duke Henry has been the head of state. So the symbol of its unity and guarantees national independence. And currently here in Luxembourg, it is only, um, so Luxembourg is the only Grand Duchy in the world with the Grand Duke as its head of state. Thank you for listening. And we are very um, excited to be here. Thanks a lot for this insightful presentation. Again, I find it really nice when I see all the team together joining. It's great. Um, moving on, let's see what our next team has to tell us. This time, I am going to welcome the team DTM2500 from Austria. Let us see you as well. Turn your cameras on. And Marcus, please go ahead with your presentation. Um, hello, we are DTM 2500 from Austria. We are three students who are currently doing their A-levels in Vienna. 
And the typical fruit from Vienna is the Wiener Schnitzel. Um, Austria has a lot of lakes and also the Alps, which is really beautiful. And the most famous person from Austria is Arnold Schwarzenegger, who is probably the most famous bodybuilder of the world. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks a lot, Marcus. Thanks a lot to all the team for, for the nice presentation. And I am now going to give the floor to our Portuguese friends, the team A Terceira e de Beige. Please turn your cameras on as well. And Manuel, go ahead. We are looking forward to hearing from you. So good afternoon. Uh, we are the team A Terceira de Beige, or third time the charm uh, from Portugal, more specifically from San João da Madeira, which is a town near a port. Uh, as our typical food, we put the codfish that we serve in a huge variety of ways here. Uh, as our tourist attraction, we put uh, Tos de Clérig in Oporto. And then we chose as our famous person from the region, uh, Sara Sampaio, who is a world famous uh, model from the north of Portugal. Thank you for listening and for the opportunity to be here. Thank you. That presentation was also very nice. Um, and now I'm going to call out the team Absolutely Nichle from Slovenia. You are up next. Let us see you as well. And this time, uh, Luca is going to give us the presentation. Okay, so hello, we are team Absolutely Nichle from Slovenia. Uh, Absolutely Nichle roughly translates to absolute zeros. Uh, and this is because we absolutely agree with the uh, ECB's decision to keep the interest rates near zero. And then on the left side, we can see Potica, which is our national dish. Uh, in the middle picture, we can see Lent, which is the oldest part of our beautiful city, Maribor. And then on the right side, we can see Filip Lisar, who is this uh, famous snowboarder, um, Slovenian snowboarder, who has won uh, several um, snowboarding competitions or championships. Okay. That's it. Thank you, Luca. It's great to have so many young, enthusiastic economists in the room. I think this is very promising. Um, and now moving on, I'll welcome the Samkovit Yetki team from Slovakia. Welcome as well. Um, it's your turn. Timotech, please unmute yourself and go ahead. Yeah, hello. First, we would like to thank you for this amazing opportunity. We are very glad to be here. Uh, we are the Slovak national team called Samkovit Yetki. We represent bilingual uh, grammar school in Suchani. Uh, firstly, before I start the presentation, I would like to thank you, our mentor Sam and our teacher, Mr. Leszek, who are also with us today. And also, I would like to say hello to all other winning teams and congratulate them on winning the competition. So uh, about our country, we are a small country in the middle of Slovakia. What you can see are brings of a halushki. I can't really like translate it into English, but it's, that, it's, a, it's a really delicious food and you should all try it. Uh, the High Tatras, that's like the most amazing place in the world. Definitely, we invite you all here to, to visit it. And our star Petra Vlohova, who win this, uh, the world skiing competition this year, uh, there's like national star this year. So. Yeah, that's, that's it, basically. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot to all of you. And I couldn't agree more with you. We not only want to welcome all the teachers that are joining us here today, but also a big, say, a big thank you for supporting all the teams and um, leading you to, to the win. So, so that's great. And last but not least, I am going to call now our last team today the Baltic bankers from Finland. Welcome as well. Please turn your cameras on so that we can see you all. And Noel, I'll give the floor to you. Hello, thank you. Well, yes, we're the Baltic bankers from Finland. We're actually from a small island between Finland and Sweden known as Åland Islands, uh, an autonomous Swedish speaking region. Uh, our first picture of the food is Baltic herring, also known as the silver of the sea here in Åland and has been a great commodity for us uh, for many years. For many hundreds of years. Uh, in the middle, we see uh, our top tourist attraction, main, who's the, uh, the ship Pommern. It's the only bar, four-masted bark preserved in its pristine condition in the world. And uh, to the right, we see our famous person, Adelina Engman, who has graduated from our school and played in both top leagues in uh, England and France. And we thank you all for uh, attending to this event and uh, wish you all a good day.
Thanks a lot, Noel. That was really nice. I also want to thank you all for these very interesting presentations. I don't know about you, but I for sure learned many things that I didn't know before. And I saw pictures of super good looking and tasty food that I wish um, I could try as well. Um, thanks a lot, really, thanks a lot. Um, and before we continue with our next activity, I would actually like to take the opportunity to thank all the teams for the questions that you sent us for President Lagarde. We received lots of them and they were truly very diverse and interesting. But unfortunately, since our time with the president is going to be quite limited and we will not have time to answer them all, we would like to ask you to vote for the ones that you find the most interesting. So if you take once more your smartphone or your tablet or even your laptop and you go back to the Mentimeter session, you will be able to see there a list with all the questions that we received. Don't worry if it looks like a lot, we are going to give you five minutes so that you can carefully go through them. And once you have decided on your top four favorite questions, let us know which ones they are by pressing on the thumbs up icon next, next to each question. Remember that you can do that only up to four times. So each of you has four votes. And then depending on the results, we will shortlist your favorite questions. And these will be the ones that we will ask to President Lagarde later today. Um, during the award ceremony. Of course, if any of you has any further questions or experience any technical events, you can let us know via the chat function on the Zoom meeting and the colleagues here will be here to support you. In that case, I'll see you back in five minutes. Thanks a lot for participating. The five minutes are over and I see you got right into it. I can see here on my tablet how the scores are going and it's great to see that we have a top eight of questions that are very diverse on many current affairs topics. So I am sure we will have a very lively and interesting discussion with President Lagarde. I see here questions on her leadership, uh, crypto assets, also about the coronavirus pandemic and climate change. So I think she will be very happy to see how interested you are in herself and also the job that we do here at the European Central Bank. So thanks a lot for that. The boat is now closed. So I will ask you please not to not to boat anymore. We will leave the count as it is and, and prepare these questions to be answered during the next session of the event. Therefore, I would like to ask all the teams who proposed the questions that made it to the top of the list, specifically the eight first questions. I'm going to ask you and your um, speakers to prepare yourselves because during the session with the president, I will call out your names so that you can post your questions directly to the president. Don't worry, I will explain already later that you can turn on your cameras and also your microphones to make sure that the the president can see you and hear you properly and she will gladly answer your question. As mentioned before, whenever you have any questions, please just let us know via the chat, the chat function and all the colleagues who are here with me will be gladly to support you. Before we move, move on to the special activity that we have prepared for today, which we hope you enjoy as much as we did preparing it, let's have a 10 minutes break so that you can all maybe grab a drink, get some fresh air, and we need to see you afterwards being at the top of your game because we will, you will need to be really focused for our next exercise. Thank you so much, and I see you in 10 minutes.
Hello again. I hope that you had a nice break and that you use the time to prepare for yourself because I have to tell you something. There's going to be a test, but I promise you it's going to be a fun test. So why don't you let me know if you are all here back from the break by uh, sending me some smileys on the chat box uh, from the Zoom window so that I can see if you are already back with us just to make sure that when we start the activity you are all here okay i'm starting to see several smiley faces which is great okay so i'll take this as we can proceed and and get started with with the next activity we have planned for you the thing is, we find it so unique having all of you together in the same room, coming from different countries, different backgrounds, but sharing the same passion about Europe and, as you said during your presentations, about the Euro as well. So this is why we have prepared a European pub quiz. We are going to test your knowledge on Europe um, through this quiz that you will be able to access very easily by following, once again, the instructions that you see on your screen. All you need to do is go back to the Mentimeter session, the same one you used before for the Q&A, but this time you will see that you will be asked to type in your name. Um, I really encourage you to type in your name because if you forget to do that, Mentimeter might give you very strange nicknames that you definitely don't want. Um, and I can see that many of you already did that. So what we are going to do now is start the quiz. It's 13 questions and let's see who is it going to be our expert in the room. So question number one, Alfred Nobel, the founder of the Nobel Prize, was famous for the invention of, you have 14 seconds to answer, just press on the answer that you think it's the correct one. And let's see how many of you answer it correctly. Time's up. Yes, well done. The right answer was dynamite. I see that most of you knew that, but maybe what you didn't know before is the alternative that Novel was considering, which was Novel Safety Powder. And I have to say, I'm glad he chose dynamite as I find it much more easier to remember. Um, so good, great to know that the first question was quite a success. And let's move on to the next one. Let's see if most of you still know this one. Which animal was never native in Europe? Was it the wolverine? the bison, the groundhog, or the brown bear? I see 14 people already replied, up to 23 now. Let's see if you got this one right. No, I'm afraid this one was not as easy as the first one. The right answer is the groundhog. And you know what? Preparing this quiz, I actually learned something that I found quite interesting, which is that groundhogs, when they hibernate into, win into winter, they sleep. It's so deep that their heart beats only five times in one minute. You see, first thing we learned today, let's move on to the third question. And let's see how this one goes. So which of this is the flag of Greece? Is it option one, two, three? Okay, so far clear. You clearly think it's option three. Let's see if you got it right. Looks like maybe we still have some participants thinking about it. Let's see if we can see the results soon. Looks like some of you are still waiting to answer. Let's give it a few more seconds. But um, so far, it looks like all of you have a clear idea of which the right answer is. I'm not sure if we have any Greeks um, in the room who maybe 
but you clearly seem to know the answer. And yes, you are right. I'm going to say it. Answer the, the right answer is option three. Indeed, you were all right, the 42 players um, who answered this correctly. Let's see if we can move on to the next question. Maybe this one is a bit more difficult. Which country has won the most Eurovision titles? Is it Ireland, the United Kingdom, Luxembourg or Sweden? Okay, maybe it was not so difficult. I see 37 people already replied very quickly. Let's see who do you think time is up. Okay, we have quite uh, balanced um, answers, but yes, the right answer is Ireland. Ireland has won the Eurovision contest seven times. So they have the record, but they also have another record, which is that the Irish are the first country to win this contest three times in a row. That's quite an achievement. Let's move on to the next question. Which of these cities is not a host of the Euro 2021 Football Championship? So all the football enthusiasts in the room, now it's your time to shine. Let's see if you know the right answer to this question. Seven seconds left. And it's the final countdown now. Let's see, 40, 41 people replied. And... I don't see many football enthusiasts with us here today because the right answer was Porto. The Portuguese city will be hosting the European Football Championship next. All right, before we continue, let's have a look at how the score is going. Let's see who's leading the game so far. Okay, Brandon Broken is on top, followed by Pedro and Pinky. But, oh no! There's been a change. It's actually Croc and Paul leading the score. But let me tell you, don't get too confident because things can change. There's still plenty of questions ahead. So let's see if you can keep up. Let's move on now to our next question. Have a look at this landmark. Look at it carefully. And now you need to guess to which country does it belong. You will see all the possible answers loading now. Just keep the picture in mind. It's a European country. Okay, we have 25 up to 30 people already responded. Let's see if you got this one right. And moving on to the final countdown before we see the answer, time is up. And yes, you did get this one right. Well done. Looks like this one was too easy. Let's see if the next one um, is maybe a bit more challenging for you. Question number six. Which country has the rooster as its symbol? I am 100% sure that some of you will for sure know the right one to this. Let's see, number of respondents is going up pretty fast. So I guess you have a clear idea in mind. Final countdown. And yes, very clearly, most of you knew this answer right. Indeed, um, the rooster, Le Coq Gallois in French is the unofficial symbol of the French nation. You probably might be thinking as well of the symbol of the Marianne, which is the official one representing uh, the French nation and the values of the Republic. Let's move on to our next question. See what that one is about. We already made it halfway. What is Peruchica in Bosnia? Is it a rainforest, a waterfall, a medieval city or a football stadium? You have 10 seconds, nine, to think about it. And time is up, let's see. 
Most of you thought it was a medieval city, but it's actually a rainforest. This is actually one of the very last virgin forests in Europe that have been pretty much untouched by human activity. So um, I guess it must definitely be a place worth visiting. Let's move on to our next question, number eight. Which European country has the highest per person beer consumption? I guess this one might surprise many of you. The answer definitely surprised me a lot. So let's see, I'm excited to see what you think about this one. You have eight seconds left to answer. And two, one, go. Let's see, time's up. Oh, you were actually quite good. I admit, I also thought it was the Germans, but no, it's actually Czech Republic. Um, the, the Czechs have a highest beer consumption with 160 liters per year and per person. This actually means a daily consumption of one beer per each woman, man and child of the country. So something else we learned today. Uh, moving on. Question nine, after this one, we'll check the score again to see how you are doing and if something changed. How many member states have been part of the European Union since 1st January 2007? Okay, here again, you are answering quite fast. Up to 30 participants replied already. Let's see if you chose the correct answer. Oh, it was quite tight between 25 and 27, but the right answer is 27. Um, when, when the European Union, or what we know today as the European Union started out during the 50s, it was just six countries who, who founded it and, and were members of them. And since then we've grown up to 27 that we are today and beyond because it, we can still um, expand further. We will see how that goes. And let's now move on by having another look at the score. Let's see uh, who's now on the lead. If anybody caught up maybe, or if we have the same winners as before. Okay, clearly changed. Mia is now on the lead, followed by Croc and Paul, but it's very, very tight. So anything could happen, stay focused, concentrate, and yeah, maybe you become the next expert in the room. Let's see, we still have a few questions left. So let's go for it. Next question, please. Number 10. At an altitude of just 75 meters, which country has the lowest high point? Is it Monaco, Malta, Denmark, or Vatican City? You have eight seconds left. And three, two, one. And time is up. Let's see what you thought about this one. Oh, clear tight between Denmark and the Vatican. But yes, Vatican City was the right answer. They have the Vatican Hill, which is the lowest high point um, at an altitude of just 75 meters in Europe. Well done. Well done for the winners. And let's continue. We are about doing right now the very last questions of the quiz. So. It's now or never. Question number 11. Name the tallest mountain in Europe. We have again four options. Is it Mount Fulica, Mount Elbrus, Mount Fulgens or Mount Ecus? You have 10 seconds left.
Yes, well done. Most of you knew this one. And it was actually a little bit tricky because the truth is that this mountain is located in the European continental plate, but it's actually, um, it belongs, let's say, to Russia. So well done. Um, if we were focusing only on in the European Union, the right answer would have been the Mont Blanc. So well done there for the 30 participants that got it right. Let's see if the other questions seem also as easy for you. Number 12. What is the name of the longest river in Europe? It's between the Oda, Danube, Volga, all the Rhine. 14 seconds. I see many participants answering super fast. We are now up to more than 40 people, almost. And it's the countdown. Time's up. And yes, very well. You got that one right. Indeed, the Bolga is the longest river in Europe. Let's continue to with, I believe, might be our very last question. Yes, that's the final question. Which is the second largest island state in Europe in terms of area? Is it Iceland, Ireland, the United Kingdom or Mallorca? Think carefully, it's our final question before we discover our winner today. Time is up. It was close between Ireland and Iceland and the right answer was Iceland. So well done, the 12 participants who got that one right. And let's see how the score changed now and who's gonna be the winner from this little test today. Let's have a look. And it was for the team Sam Kovedietki. Well done, well done, team. That was a, quite a high score. I hope I hope you didn't cheat and you didn't check anything on Google and did it by yourself. But that's a truly achievement. Thanks so much. Well done. Um, but also well done for the rest of the teams as well. I hope that even if you didn't get all the questions right, it was still helpful for you to learn some new interesting things about Europe. I actually, I certainly did. So I hope you did as well. And now moving on, thanks so much uh, for participating here. We are getting closer and closer to the award ceremony with uh, President Lagarde and other members of the governing council of the participating countries that will also join us in the ceremony. All of them want to congratulate you on this achievement and encourage you to further pursue your careers and interests in, in Europe and also, as you mentioned before, in economics. So now, before we get to the start of the event, which will begin at four um, Central European time, I'm going to ask you to keep your microphones off as well as your cameras until the event begins. As I mentioned earlier, you will have the opportunity to ask the most voted questions to President Lagarde. I will call out the names of the speakers of each team, depending on, on who proposed what question. And when I do that, I will also ask you to turn your cameras on as well as your microphones so that you can directly speak with, with President Lagarde, who will be answering your questions as well. During the event, all of the teams will have the opportunity to take a picture with uh, President Lagarde. When it's the time to do that, I will also call you out so that you know when to switch on your cameras. And please remember, once your picture is taken, please take your cameras off because the next team will be, will be also taking the picture so that they can turn theirs on and like this successively until the end. Don't worry, I will be calling it out all the time. And as mentioned, if you have any questions, just go to the chat function um, in the Zoom meeting and colleagues will be there uh, to support you. It was truly a pleasure uh, playing around um, in this uh, dynamic session with you and especially hearing all your voices during the presentations. It was lovely to meet you and also your hometowns. So thanks a lot. I look forward to see you once again 
in, in the award ceremony with the president. And I know that she's truly looking forward to um, answer all your questions and see which topics are you interested in. So thank you so much and see you back at four. Welcome to the 2021 Final Generation Euro Students Award. Your hosts tonight, Georgina Garriga Sanchez and the President of the European Central Bank, Christine Lagarde. And now, the warmest welcome to this year's GISA finalists. Out of Germany, the team Chateau Chapeau. From Ireland, Team Venture Team. From Spain, Mr. Euro. From France, Urbofil. From Italy, Team Rosetti Project. From Luxembourg, Team Europeace. From Austria, Team DTM 2500. From Portugal, Atesera Adeves. From Slovenia, Absolutne Znitsle. From Slovakia, Team Sankove Dieki. And from Finland, the Baltic Bankers. And now, without further ado, let us begin. Hello, good afternoon and welcome to this, year, to this year's Generation Euro Students Award final event. My name is Georgina Garriga Sanchez and I work at the Communications Department of the European Central Bank and I am very happy to be here with all of you moderating this session today. I would like to start by welcoming President of the European Central Bank, Christine Lagarde. Good afternoon, President Lagarde, and thank you so much for being with us today. It's a pleasure to have you here. And I would also like to, of course, give a very warm welcome to the other representatives of the governing council from the participating countries and all the national central banks representatives also joining us today. But of course, a very warm welcome as well to all the teachers and the students that are here with us who are the main protagonists of this session. President Lagarde, this is the first time that as president of the European Central Bank, you are joining us for this award ceremony. How does that feel? We are all looking forward to hearing from you. Well, it's, uh, it's a great pleasure to be, to be here and to uh, actually celebrate uh, the great work and the success of, of the winning teams and those who have been selected. Thank you. Now, so I'm much. very happy to say a few words now. You know, I'm uh, for once I'm taking your instructions and uh, following your guidance. So would you like to say a few would you like me to say a few words of congratulations or how do yeah. you want to proceed? Of course, we are all looking forward to hearing from you. The teams are very excited. So please the floor is all yours. Okay, thank you so much. So, uh, it's it's a real privilege and a great honor to be actually congratulating all those who've been presented on screen on the opening of this, uh, of this particular moment. And they are the winners of the 2021 Generation Euro Students Award. Uh, you've achieved great things uh, and uh, it's clearly a, a, a big day for you, but it's a big day for us as well, because you are the next generation of the economists and the financial experts and the banking experts and the citizens of Europe who will want to contribute as of now and for many years to come. Now, because nothing happens um, miraculously, I would also like to thank those who have uh, trained you, those who have helped you, particularly the teachers, but also your family members, because I'm sure that they had to put up with some strange uh, 
hours of hard work that you also produced uh, preparing for this event. Let me focus on uh, three letters, uh, the same letter actually, courage, cooperation and commitment. It's always helpful to me to remember uh, initials of words, particularly if they are the same, because it seems to me that you've demonstrated all three. You had to demonstrate courage because I know that some of you were not necessarily economists by, uh, by training and did not study necessarily economics, but still you wanted to participate and you understood that the topics were actually of common interest. And regardless of your background, you actually showed courage in presenting your ideas to the highest officials. You know, in my professional life, I've seen many top-notch experts present in front of other top-notch experts. And it's a very intimidating moment for any person. So you've done that, you presented before the national central banks, you presented be before very high-ranking officials. And I think that this is a very courageous uh, act on your part and I hope that you will learn from that process because there will be many occasions like that where you will hold your breath feel this sort of big emptiness in your stomach and and this noise inside yourself telling don't do it don't do it and yet this very strong voice as well saying yes you can do it do it and for that you have been courageous now you have also clearly shown cooperation because things do not happen uh, because one person is a hero. It's no longer the case. Actually, we all rely on teams, of, on other experts, on people who support you all along when conducting a project. And I'm sure that you've grown together as a team. It shows on the photos, actually, I have to tell you. And working with team members, having the ability sometimes to say, yeah, I thought I was right, but maybe I should qualify my views, or maybe I'm wrong. And the other persons in my group are probably more right than I am. This capacity to argue, demonstrate, compromise, and then come up with the rest of the team is also something that you will experience in the future as a big positive. And finally, commitment. Boy, I've, I've heard a few um, anecdotes about how some of you had to work. And I know that some of you had to pick up tasks when members of the team actually decided to quit. Uh, some of you were turned down the first time around and came back to it. Um, for some, your website just crashed on you when you tried to upload your paper. Now, I can assure you it happens to everybody. It ca can happen to the best and the brightest. And uh, I also heard that some of you almost got locked in the school because you were studying and working so hard. So you did not quit. Uh, you showed commitment, you demonstrated that you are really worthy of this particular moment. You should be proud of yourself. You should take that moment with you all the time and remember that CCC, courage, cooperation and commitment will take you a long way. I can tell you that for us at the ECB, we also had to demonstrate courage, cooperation and commitment. We had to, I think we had to demonstrate courage because we had to take unprecedented measures in order to stabilize financial market, in order to support the economy. And uh, this took a bit of courage. It was not something that had been done as promptly and as massively as we did it. And we did ask ourselves sometimes, are we doing the right thing? But it took courage to actually get there, do it, and, and uh, do as much preparation as we could in order to deliver. We also uh, needed to cooperate. And uh, you know, the European response to the crisis, to this crisis, the COVID-19 crisis was unprecedented. Uh, we worked together, the commission, the parliament, the European council uh, and the ECB. We are, the ECB is independent and, uh, and, and it's very important, but it doesn't stop us from cooperating with other European institutions and we did so. And what's even more unprecedented is the response that was given by the Europeans in the form of the next generation EU fund and the whole anti-pandemic plan that was put together. It was the first time that European countries actually went out together to borrow jointly, to be liable jointly, and to support each other in, 
in, in a manner that had never happened before, by giving grants to those that were worst hit, by giving very uh, affordable loans to those that had suffered most. And that was clearly cooperation at its best. Some called it solidarity. Uh, it's also in the spirit of cooperation that it, it happened. And commitment uh, certainly was also demonstrated. Um, it's not over. There's still a lot of uncertainty about the course of the pandemic, the spread of more infectious uh, variants and the rollout of the uh, vaccination campaign, which is now finally coming uh, to, uh, to a good uh, pace. But the next month will be a time when Europe must stay strong and hold on its convictions. And it is essential that monetary and fiscal support are not withdrawn too soon, that monetary authorities and fiscal authorities work hand in hand. And as far as the ECB is concerned, we will stand by our commitment, our commitment to protect uh, Europe's economy, to deliver on our mandate of price stability, and to make sure that all those who make Europe and European economy on a day-to-day -day basis by financing, by investing, by consuming, uh, where, whether they are corporates, small or large, uh, families, households, they need to have the stability and the financing available in order to respond uh, to the current situation. So, as I said, you are the future of all these challenges. You'll have to face, uh, I'm sure, probably more complicated and, and complex one that will require sharp mind, team spirit, courage, commitment, and cooperation. So it gives me great pleasure to celebrate your achievements and to congratulate you on what you have collectively in your respective team uh, achieved and, and the perseverance that you have demonstrated in making the points that you really believed in. So let us uh, have, I think we have a debate now with questions, answers, and uh, I'll be very happy to, uh, uh, to address your concerns. But again, first and foremost, Congratulations to each and every one of you and to US teams. Thank you very much for your words, President Lagarde. That was truly inspiring. And indeed, as you said, we do have a room full of Europe and Euro enthusiastics, and they sent many questions for you to answer. But since unfortunately we will not have time for all of them, we asked our young participants to vote for their favorite ones until we came up with a, with a short list of the top most interesting questions. So if you are ready for it, um, I'm going to give Give the floor now to our first speaker who is going to be Manuel from our Fort Portuguese team. Manuel, please turn your camera on and your microphone as well so that President Lagarde can, can see and hear you. Please go ahead. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, President Christine Lagarde. Uh, we have prepared a question for you and our question uh, is, how do you feel as the first ECB woman president? And if you have any advice for our young students that aim one day to be at your position. Thank you very much for being here. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for your question and for the clarity of these questions. And I will tell you something. I give uh, every six weeks uh, a press conference after the monetary policy decision that is taken by the governing council. And you would not believe the number of journalists who say, um, okay, I have a question. And then they move into a second question and a third question and sometimes a fourth question. And you're in the middle of all that. Your two questions are perfectly clear and explicit to the point and brief, so excellent. How does it feel being the first woman president of the ECB? Um, it feels sometimes uh, like a really um, heavy responsibility. Uh, first of all, I think that it's largely overdue. There is no reason why um, a woman could not be just like a man, president of the ECB, president of any international institutions, as I was for the IMF as well. Um, and in the case of the ECB, given that the institution is only 20 years of age, uh, okay, it's not as much overdue as it is for others which were much older. But it's a heavy responsibility because um, being the first uh, means that I have to 
prove the case that they can be a second and a third and a fourth and so on and so forth. And because of this sort of um, latent, very intangible suspicion about the fact that maybe women are not as capable as men of achieving certain things, well, then maybe I will fail. And when you're confronting that kind of situation or that kind of impression, it gives you a renewed sense of having to demonstrate that, of course, a woman can do it. And of course, they can be another one after me and another one after her. Not that it should exclude uh, men, because I think that we all bring uh, diversity and quality and skills to the table. And it's a matter of what is the best set of skills for particular circumstances. But it's, it's, it's sometimes heavy on my shoulders um, to, to have been the first. Now, it's happened to me before, and uh, I'll, I'll, um, you know, I'll, I'll face that particular experience yet again. But my, my pride is if somebody else after me is also a woman, as was the case, for instance, in, uh, at the IMF, where I was succeeded by another woman. So that, that's how it feels sometimes. And irrespective of being a woman, being president of the ECB at a time when uh, the whole world is hit by COVID-19 is, is of course a huge challenge uh, and an occasion to show what you have demonstrated in your teams, courage, cooperation and commitment, without which I don't think we would have been able to build the response that we did uh, when COVID-19 started hitting uh, the Euro area and when suddenly, you know, everything froze. Um, you know, the financial markets were in turmoil, um, countries were shutting down one after the other, uh, lockdown measures were decided, and we were in, in the unknown because we had no experience of something like that. Financial crisis we had had in the past, uh, different kinds, different format, but we had some experience. But that, you know, the shutdown as, as, as we saw it, was something where we had to, you know, open a new chapter and write that book of response. Now, what advice would I give you if you wanted to do that, uh, that job? One, I'd say that um, I strongly believe that nothing happens without hard work. Uh, you, you, you don't get anywhere. Well, you, sometimes you can get somewhere by luck, but you can't stay there by luck. You really have to put in a lot of hard work and, uh, and, and try to expand your horizon. So I would say, uh, make sure that your horizon is broad, uh, that you master uh, a few languages so that you can actually understand other people uh, as best as you can. Uh, I would say, because you, you, you have time on your hands, I'd say, uh, yeah, that's the best advice I can give you is enlarge the horizon, try to absorb as much as you can, try to understand other people as much as you can, and um, try to speak their language. It's, it's something that uh, will, will pay back, I can assure you. Thanks a lot for your answer, President Lagarde, and of course to Manuel for the question. Our next speaker is going to be Luca, representing the Italian team. Luca, please turn your camera and your microphones on, and the floor is yours. Good afternoon, President Lagarde. It is such an honor to be here. And my question is, could the developments of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoins represent, in your opinion, a threat for the effectiveness of ACB's monetary policy and the stability of financial markets? What will be the future of centralized monetary system in case cryptocurrency sectors continue to advance and grow? Well, it's very nice to see you on screen. I have to say that I'm intrigued by what is standing behind you, Liceo Scientifico da -da -da -da, San yes. Benedetto del Toronto. But it's funny yeah. because it's upside down. Yes, <laughs> it's a banner, as you can see. This is our logo. Oh, uh, it is actually it is actually a monument from our city, San Benedetto del Tronto. And uh -huh. yes, 
the name of the school, the DNA Alex, and uh, these men playing because we also have at our school a section for sports, and that's the logo basically. Terrific. Okay, so you asked me about um, crypto. I would prefer to call them crypto assets rather than cryptocurrencies. I don't know whether you used one or the other, but to me. Um, you know, things like uh, Bitcoins, Ethereum and others are not cryptocurrencies um, by a long shot, actually, because they don't really respond to the three key functions that a currency uh, should, uh, should, um, should provide to its users. So I'd, I'd rather call them crypto assets. And I have said repeatedly, and I've been on record uh, to say that these crypto assets are uh, speculative assets. Uh, are volatile, uh, are not especially stable. And, um, and colleagues of mine have actually said that, you know, of course you can invest in crypto assets, but you have to be prepared to lose it all. Um, and to be fair, what we have seen recently in the last couple of weeks uh, has been a, a, a decline of the uh, value of some of those crypto uh, assets by more than 20%. Just because one person, namely Elon Musk, uh, said a couple of things on a Saturday night uh, show and um, that prompted a significant decline. So it clearly shows that it, it is not a currency and it is not um, a way to transact uh, as, as you would otherwise do with uh, with regular currencies such as the euro, such as the, the pound or the, or the Swiss francs or of course uh, the dollar. So uh, it is not a currency, it is an asset. It's a highly speculative asset. Uh, it has developed quite a bit over the course of time recently, uh, but it is certainly not something that could threaten uh, financial stability given the, uh, uh, the, the, the total value that it represents. I would say that uh, in addition to that, because of its, because of two aspects, I think there is something really um, that requires regulation and supervision about it. Number one, it is a very high consumer of energy. And in those days when we are and should all be concerned about climate change and how much energy is being used and what source of energy is being used, I think we should really be concerned about uh, that the, the you know the mining that is necessary into the process of um, sort of fueling and supporting uh, the, something like the Bitcoin system. That's number one. Number two, uh, given that it's um, it's anonymous, although transactions are traceable, uh, it is also very propitious to conduct some uh, dark transactions. And it's often found as the means of exchange for uh, businesses that are uh, not uh, permissible. And when we all have at heart to fight money laundering, when we all want to fight the financing of terrorism, any device that can be conducive to such activities uh, need at least uh, to be regulated, to be supervised. Um, and, and I'm pleased to see that actually at the European level, uh, this, this, is, this is now beginning to happen. There's something, I don't know if you followed it, which is Mika, which is um, a new regulation that would apply to crypto assets, exactly what you're talking about. And uh, on which we have made, we at the ECB have made comments uh, in order to make sure that no such thing are authorized unless it has had the approval uh, and the consent of the ECB. So um, I think, you know, in, in, in a nutshell, that's what I can tell you about those, uh, those crypto assets. Uh, they, they, they have uh, thrived on the back of, you know, being, being um, uh, fashionable, trendy, uh, underground. But my goodness, it's, uh, it's as I said, highly speculative uh, asset, uh, high cons consumers of uh, fossil energy at this point in time and uh, facilitating a very uh, uh, unacceptable uh, trade and businesses. So 
I don't have much of that in my portfolio, I have to tell you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot to both of you. I know that Margot, representing our winning team from Luxembourg, is ready with is ready to ask the third question to you. Margot, please, the floor is yours whenever you are ready. Yes. We are honored to be here and to be able to ask you the question. So um, what alternatives does the European Central Bank have if neither conventional nor non-conventional measures are effective in the medium term? Thank you. Well, congratulations on this wonderful um, visual that you, you offer. You know, five, five determined women uh, all together joining forces and producing a team that is superb. So congrats. Uh, I'm saying that without any, uh, um, <laughs> any second thoughts because I know that there was a team which I saw on, on the presentation that was an all male team. So you can, you know, you can perfectly legitimately be an all woman team. Having said that, I'm a strong proponent of diversity. And I think that it's by bringing differences uh, together that we actually produce the best results. And that's certainly what I've experienced. So um, I would, you know, to your question, which is a very pointed question, I would like to uh, make the following response. At a time when what we now call conventional monetary policy was the only uh, way of conducting monetary policy. That is, you know, using uh, the interest rate uh, as a mean to obtain price stability. Nobody was thinking of unconventional monetary policy. So in the face of what happened in uh, 2008 and following, particularly in the Euro area in 2011, Unconventional monetary policy was explored, considered, the pros and cons, direct and indirect effects were identified, weighted, and eventually some measures of unconventional monetary policy uh, were used. And by that I mean uh, the use of forward guidance, the use of quantitative easing, uh, specific uh, financing schemes that were put in place in order to make sure that financing would be available. And we currently have in the toolbox all those devices. If and when a time come when alternative devices must be used, I am sure, given the track record that central bankers have demonstrated, that new tools, new items will be identified. I would say for the moment that what we have suffice and what this current crisis has demonstrated is that when fiscal policy and monetary policy work hand in hand, they actually support each other and provide really the, uh, the best outcome that is possible. So we, we keep improving over the course of time, whether it's by using additional tools, whether it's by uh, joining forces and showing cooperation as has been the case, but I have full confidence that you know, we will not uh, let Europe down and uh, central bank uh, governors all over the world will find enough creativity to uh, have the tools needed to respond to any future crisis. Thank you. Thanks a lot once again. And let me now give the floor to Garrett representing the winning team from Ireland who also has a question that wants to pose for you. Garrett, please go ahead. Hello, President Lagarde, I hope you're well. Um, congratulations on the vital work you do. So our question is, you yourself are a great supporter for tackling climate change and have recently stated climate change will have an effect on the price stability on, in the euro. Um, the ECB holds corporate bonds of 140 oil and gas companies, which indirectly aid in climate change. And do you think it is contradictory to the climate change, price stability while purchasing these bonds? Well, thank you, lads. I think it's it's an old boy team that I have in front of me, right? Yes, we're a single sex school. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. I hope it's not too boring. Okay, now, first of all, I'd like to apologize because in addition to my voice, you probably hear some background noise because there is construction work happening uh, just next to me. And uh, as much as I would like to keep that quiet, I'm very happy that there is construction work and activity going on because it's going to 
continue to revive uh, recovery. So, so uh, I've made my view extremely clear, and uh, this is a matter which is being discussed with members of the Governing Council of the ECB as part of our strategy review. And my extremely clear view is that climate change is far too important a matter and far too important a challenge for us and all future generations to be considered as an ancillary aspect of anything that we do. And I, I'm very uh, prepared to recognize that those in the driving seats are not the central banks. Those in the driving seats are every citizen, but more importantly, the governments through regulation, through taxation, through budgets. They have to deploy all the tools that they can in order to make sure that we go in a direction where we do not uh, accelerate climate change, where we try to mitigate it, and where we try to help those that are on a track that is not conducive to the objective that we have of net zero emission to change their business model and to adapt, okay? So once you've said that, you haven't given the answer of what are you going to do? And I think that um, any central bank can operate in different directions. Number one, we have to take climate change into account when we assess the risk. And those risks are sitting in the balance sheets of banks, including in the balance sheet of the ECB. Those risks can be a threat to the existence of some corporates, of some households, and therefore to the value of the collaterals that they bring to get financed in. So from a risk management point of view, we have to actually be able to measure that and to associate a cost to those uh, sometimes um, what economists will call externalities, because you don't really see it now. But if you do a little planning, a little scenario of what will happen if temperature goes up by so much or if the sea rise by so much, what happens then? So we need to be able to do that from a risk management point of view. Second, when we do our uh, monetary policy and we analyze the economic situation, the macroeconomic situation, well, we need to consider how many more droughts will we have, how, how much more um, by how many more degrees the temperature, temperature will go up, how many more people will, be, will have to migrate and leave their countries because their shores are too low and they will be covered up by, by, by sea. So that has to be factored in at that level. Now, the third dimension, which is the one that is of interest and where you say, well, when I look at your portfolio, at your monetary policy portfolio, I see the corporate um, purchases, corporate bonds purchases that you've made. And guess what? You actually bought bonds from some of those oil and gas companies, which are essentially based on fossil fuel identification, exploration, extraction, and distribution. And to that, I will say, yes, it is the case that we have some of those because so far we've operated on the basis of what has been called market neutrality. I, for myself, consider that market neutrality is not absolutely accurate because there have been many more bond issuance by those companies that are, that are whose business model is based on gas, oil and gas, to, to keep it simple, and a lot less bonds issued, for instance, by the service industry, which is yet far more important in our economies and much bigger contributors to our overall um, uh, asset creation, if you will. So I don't think that we are actually in a situation of compliance with market neutrality because the principle itself is, is tweaked, is biased, if you will. So my hope is that as part of the strategy review, we'll be able to properly quantify this market neutrality principle that we have been abiding from and that we will actually take into account things that can be better measured in a standardized way. What do I mean by that? Today, we finally have, thanks to the resilience and determination of the European Parliament, we have the beginning of a taxonomy. In other words, you know, something that files what is green, what is not green. 
I think they're going to have to do more than that because we want to know what is green, what is not so green, what is a little bit green, what is brownish, what is really brown, so that we have the complete uh, range of you know what is actually conducive to climate change, what is going to help in the fight against climate change. So we need that and we need that to be as standardized as possible. That is step one. Step two, we will also need to assess what corporates are planning on doing. Because, you know, as, as another very good Irish person, in addition to you, um, Mrs. McGuinness, who is the Irish commissioner, uh, we have to think of all those companies that employ all these people. And we can't just tell them overnight, sorry, no financing anymore. They have to transition. They have to gradually move from fossil only activity for some, there are not so many left of that category, to non fossil fuel activity and to moving into a, a, a journey that will take them to being green or as green as possible. So we will need a mechanism where we can actually assess their transition path because we need to help them along the line. You cannot move from being 100% uh, activity to being 0% activity. You have to move gradually across the line of becoming uh, climate change compatible uh, and, and, and you have to be financed throughout the process. So I hope we can participate in that adventure because I think we owe it to you, we owe it to, uh, to our planet. We only have one of those. Uh, and we have to preserve it. Thank you. Thank you, President Lagarde. Indeed, we have to preserve it. Thanks a lot for such a clear explanation, President Lagarde. And it seems that we have time for one very last question. And I know that our winning German team was very interested in knowing what distinguishes you from other presidents. Maybe our speaker, Paula, would like to further elaborate and pose the question to you. Paula, please feel free to turn your camera and your microphones on. Yes. Uh, <laughs> good afternoon, uh, Mrs. President. We are very excited to speak to you today. And we wanted to ask you uh, which, uh, what distinguishes you from previous ECB president, um, apart from being a woman and them being men. I was going to tell you my shoes. Um, <laughs> When, when my predecessor, uh, President, now President Draghi, left the ECB, um, I quote Marilyn Monroe saying that, you know, if you give a girl the right pair of shoes, she'll go a long way. And uh, I'm, I'm jokingly telling you that my shoes would distinguish me from my predecessors. But being more, um, <laughs> more specific, I think we are, we are very much the product of um, how circumstances force you to develop. And uh, you can be the president of an institution that is just being born, and that requires a particular set of uh, tools and skills and attributes. Then you can be the, um, the, the one that pursues the enterprise and becomes, you know, who is faced with a major crisis and who has to sort of pull the, pull all the, the, the strings of the anti-crisis uh, fight. And then you can continue being an almost exclusively anti-crisis uh, president. When I started, you know, back in um, a year and a half ago, I was hoping, and I had been told by my predecessor that it would be, it would be a smooth journey. And none of us had a clue that COVID-19 was going to hit and that we were going to face, you know, the worst possible crisis in, in generations, actually. So circumstances actually force you to respond and, and equip you with, um, you know, the guts, the nerves, um, hopefully the brain and certainly the heart to respond in, in as comprehensive a way as possible, thinking about uh, the people, 
thinking about uh, the young people who uh, suddenly were, you know, short of uh, classes, courses, studies, uh, left with their screen and a little room to study from, uh, their families uh, who sometimes had to also quit their job or, or work from home in, in small places, uh, the companies that had to completely reshuffle their plans and, and you know, this, this complete meltdown of our economies uh, required us to respond forcefully and to face uh, what, what was a bit of a shamble, frankly. So I think to, to keep out, I, I think what I tried to do at the time was to work with the team, um, keep my nerves, not panic, uh, appreciate what toolbox, uh, what tools we had in the toolbox that would be most efficient in response. And we also tried to work in cooperation with other central banks. You know, I, during that period of the crisis, which I think shaped me very much, I was talking to uh, the president of the Fed, to the president of the, uh, of the presidents of other central banks, on a sometimes daily basis at the beginning, and then later on a weekly basis. And we had to just admit to each other that there were things that we, we, we did not know and we had to experiment and we had to compare notes and, and, and hope that what we were putting together would work. So I think there's an element of, you know, keep your nerves, have the courage, sometimes takes some risk, um, check with other team uh, players, not necessarily at home, certainly at home, but also beyond your shores uh, to make sure that you were, you were taking as many options and narrowing it to the best possible choice in response to the crisis. So I don't know if, you know, another president would have responded in the same way. They might have done a lot better uh, than I did, but I certainly was myself shaped by successive crises, and this one, COVID-19, was certainly of all the ones I've, that I've seen, um, a pretty harsh, uh, in-your-face kind of crisis. So, voila. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot to all the teams for the questions that you submitted, which were very diverse and very interesting. And of course, a big thanks as well to President Lagarde for her insightful remarks. But I think now it's time for the activity that you were all home hoping for, which is the award ceremony. I will now announce each of the teams and give the floor to President Lagarde and also some of the governing council representatives from the participating countries that are joining us today so that they can formally congratulate each of the teams one by one. And afterwards, we will also have the opportunity to take a team picture. So without further ado, let me start now by announcing our first winning team, Chateau Chapeau, the, nationals winner, the national winners from Germany. Please team, turn your cameras on so that we can all see your faces. And President Lagarde, the floor is all yours. Well, thank you and congratulations to team Chateau Chapeau from Germany. Um, I'm told that uh, your teacher always uh, played you uh, one of his favorite songs to give you some strong motivation during team meetings. And uh, I think that, you know, it, it, we'll, we often say that behind every uh, successful person, there is somebody who believed in them. I think that your teacher by doing that certainly believed in you as well. Uh, I, I believe also that it is because you met Jens Beidman uh, that you decided to participate in the competition. So he will have to be told uh, that he was the cause for your participation. Congratulations again, terrific. Thanks so much. Team Germany, please turn your cameras on. We want to see you because now it's time for us to take a team picture. So smile, we are taking the picture in three. Yeah, we want all team members, huh? Yeah. Yes, of you course, go. you all have to be there. So let's... Do the quick countdown in three, two, one. Thank you so much once again for participating and for being here. 
please turn off your cameras now because now it's time to announce and welcome and congratulate, of course, our next team coming from Ireland, Team Bentotene, who is also joined by Mrs. Halton and Mr. Parl from the National Central Bank of Ireland. Please turn all your cameras on so that we can properly see you. And I will now give the floor again to President Lagarde. Well, congratulations to Team Ventotene from Ireland. Uh, I'm told that you used artificial intelligence to predict interest rates. So, well done. Um, Garrett Molloy, uh, the team leader, I understand is writing a book on past and future European integration. And this motivated the team's participation in the competition. So I'm assuming that, uh, Garrett, you are the one in the middle. Yes, that's what I thought. All right. OK, well, congratulations to all three of you. This is uh, really well done. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Indeed. Congratulations. And let's take now another picture in three, two, one. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Irish team. Please, all are, you team. are you sure that they were on? Because on my screen, it didn't work out so well. Oh, oh, actually, it turns out it seems you are right, President Lagarde. So let's let's repeat it again, then put on your okay. smile behind the masks. <laughs> and let's do the countdown once again. Three, two, one. Thank you. I think now it worked, right? Yeah. Yes, I think so. Thank you so much. So all the teams now, please turn your cameras off, except Mr. Euro, our Spanish team, who is also joined by Governor Hernández de Cos from Banca de España. Congratulations from me as well. And President Lagarde, the floor is yours. Well, congratulations uh, to Mr. Euro from Spain. And uh, hello to my colleague, Governor of the Central Bank of, of Spain. Um, so I was told that it was your teacher, Nuria, who encouraged you to participate. Um, I'm also told that to have more time to work on the project, you ordered takeaway food at school. <laughs> and you are the team that worked once so hard and so late that you were nearly locked in and would have to spend the whole night actually in the school. So well done for your, your resilience, your determination uh, and your good spirit because to feel that you are locked overnight without much comfort and certainly without uh, beddings and all the rest of it must not have been the best moment. Uh, and maybe it was the best moment actually. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's do it once again. Picture with the Spanish team in three, two, one. Thank you. I think we are getting the jinx can of it. Can, can you do it again? Because I think the first, the, the picture that was just taken was with um, the governor of the Central Bank of Luxembourg, who is a wonderful uh, governor, but he's not the Spanish governor. And I'm, <laughs> I think that now you have the Spanish governor. <laughs> Nice to see you here. Let's do it again, indeed. Okay, picture time in three, two, one. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot to the Spanish team. Congratulations. Please turn your cameras off now and let's have them on only for the Eurofiles, the winners of, um, of the France competition. Let us see you, please. Turn your cameras on <laughs> and President Lagarde, the floor is yours. Well, felicitations. Eh? Uh, congratulations to the Europhil uh, from France. I know that you're coming from uh, Annonay on uh, Ardèche, and uh, that's definitely not the city center that everybody thinks of. So it's even, I think, better that you had the, the spirit to, uh, to enter the competition and win it. It's fantastic. Uh, you enjoyed uh, the presentation round of the competition most because I'm told you are fans of eloquence. And I, I hear that, Leah, uh, you are the team leader and uh, you actually signed up the two other members 
for the competition, even before asking them. You just assume that they would follow your lead. I would call that real leadership because then you manage to convince them. So congratulations uh, for your success and, and well done to all three of you. I understand that the governor of the National Central Bank of France is also going to be online and with us for the photo. So uh, he's, I know, very proud of what you've achieved. Uh, thank you a lot, uh, President Lagarde. It is very kind. Uh, just unfortunately, I can't uh, turn my camera on, and so I can't join you for the um, photo. Maybe I should uh, quit, uh, leave the room. I don't know what to do. <laughs> That's, uh, well, you know what? Technology is so great that maybe somebody will manage to Photoshop you in, in the team <laughs> so that you can be properly yeah, recorded. But... That's yes, of course. Uh, what, what should I do? Mm, so what should please, I do? I'm unmuted. Could you please, uh, sorry, could you please say your name again and the colleagues here will try to support you. Uh, my name is Lea Guagu. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lea. And of course, this goes for everyone on the line. If you have any technical questions or experience any issues, please use the chat box and the colleagues here um, will support you um, as they can. But in answer to what- Oh, uh, here you come. Yeah. I think Lea um, has joined. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see you. Um, anyway, before we take the team picture, I just wanted to um, tell President Lagarde that unfortunately, governor, um, the governor of the Banque de France uh, couldn't make it in the end. Um, he had another commitment he couldn't postpone, but he did um, apologize and send all her best wishes to all of you and congratulations on the success of the French team as well. So now, without further ado, let's take the team picture with the winners of the French competition in three, two, one. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Feel free to turn your cameras off now. As Congratulations. Eh? Thank you very much. <laughs> we continue now the event with the Italian team. Rossetti project, also joined by Director General Gaiotti from Banca d'Italia. Congratulations. President Lagarde, once well, again. Congratulations to Team Rossetti project from Italy. Well done. Um, I'm told that you don't have an economics class at school, but you decided to participate to just challenge yourself. And I think that's really, really courageous. Uh, of you to have done so and you know it was clearly crowned with success because you've been selected it's it's really terrific um, and I think you're also the team for which uh, just before the deadline of the second round uh, the website to upload your project crashed went down and you managed all the way to get to where you are so you're really uh, really really resilient well done and uh, you have uh, a top-notch representative of the Banca d'Italia who is with us and who will be on screen for the photo. It's really good. Thank you. Yes, it's great to have you all here. Congratulations indeed, especially on your perseverance. And let's now take the team picture in three, two, one. Thank you. And now we continue. Thank and you, Eugenio. We continue and we proceed with our next team coming from Luxembourg, the European team, who is also joined by Governor Reinesch from Banque Centrale du Luxembourg. Please turn your cameras on so that we can all see you and President Lagarde can see you while congratulating you on this achievement. All right, here are my girls. So congratulations to, uh, to all of you. Uh, you. Your team is Europeace from Luxembourg. And I find it really uh, great, Europeace, because you've managed to put three words into one. You've got the Euro, Europe, and peace. And, and that is really a, a great marketing tool that you've invented for that purpose, so terrific. Now, I, I know that your school was the first secondary school in Luxembourg, and uh, I also hear, and I'm, I'm very humbled and, and proud at the same time, that uh, your motivation to participate in the competition 
was actually uh, to meet with me. So we've achieved that, it's great. And I'm, I'm really, really proud of you. Keep up the good work. And we are very lucky because we have with us um, the governor of the Central Bank of Luxembourg, Gaston Reinach, who is a very, very good colleague and friend. And I'm so pleased that he's supporting you. Gaston, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. And maybe this time, before we move on with the team picture, maybe Governor Reinesh would also like to take the floor and congratulate the winning team as well. Yes, let me first of all uh, congratulate all the national winning, te winning teams and to allow me special congratulations to the Luxembourg Europace, Europeans, Europeans winning team. And uh, let me express uh, a hope that some of you all will be future central bankers, maybe in your national central bank or in the central bank of the euro system, because there's a lot of mobility. For example, in Luxembourg, we have more than 25 nationalities working in our central bank. So I made a bit of publicity for the euro system, Christine. Thank oh, you. Very good. Congratulations. Very good. Well, maybe they could all come and visit with you. They can, and they will. <laughs> And we offer also traineeships for the winning team. Ah. So they can have a traineeship in the Central Bank for two or three weeks. Everyone wishes so from the winning team. That sounds Terrific. great. Yes, you should send us pictures from this visit for all of us. Um, so see you. <laughs> yes. See you, Gaston. Uh, but before we continue with the next team, let's take <coughs> our team picture in three, two, one. Thank you, there we go, thanks a lot. And please feel free to turn your cameras off now as we move on to our next winning team from Austria, the DTM2500 team. Please turn your cameras on so that we can all see you and President Lagarde, as once again, the floor is yours. So congratulations to team DTM2500 from Austria. I understand that DTM stands for the first letters of the team members' names, and 2500 is the postcode of your hometown. Very important, the postcode. You know, for statistics and all the rest of it, it it's really uh, key. So your hometown, Baden, uh, is for you, as I understand, the most beautiful city in Austria. And uh, a year ago thought, that you team, I'm told, correct me if I get that wrong, you all thought that the ECB was located in Brussels. <laughs> so this project has taken you a long way into uh, the European institutions, story, backup, uh, principles and all the rest of it. And I want to say, you know, well done for, for doing that and, uh, and traveling that journey to where you are now. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, very well done indeed. Let's move on to the picture then. Ready, smiles ready, and countdown to three, two, one. Thank you. Thank you very much. And moving on with our congratulations next are our Portuguese friends from the team Aterceira Erebesh. Please let us see you turn your cameras on. Here you go, you all on. Terrific. So congratulations to all of you, the team from Portugal. Uh, I don't know how I would pronounce the name that you gave to your, to your team. It's <laughs> A3AEDVES. So I got it all wrong. Not at all the way it should be pronounced, but never mind. Uh, what I hear is that two years ago you tried and you were disqualified because you did not fulfill the age requirement and you didn't give up. You aged a little bit and then you satisfied the requirements and you now reach the top of the competition. So well done. Uh, you belong to a Geza dynasty. The 2016, 2017 winner of Geza was a team from your school as well. So you set the standard. Uh, another team in four to five years will have to also 
uh, take up the mantle from you and win yet again. Congratulations and uh, all the best in your future endeavors. Yeah, I'll be in your country in a few, few days, actually. Well, thank you very much. I hope you spend a good time here. And actually, as a curiosity, we have here a member of our team that is a sister from one member of that team of 2016 that won here. Wow. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, Congrats to all of you. Nice. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. And we hope that indeed there are many more teams to come in the future. Let's get ready now for our picture with the Portuguese team members in three, two, one. Thank you. Thank you so much and congratulations once again. And now let's see our colleagues from Slovenia, from the team Absolutne Nichle, who are also joined by Deputy Governor Dolenks from Banca Slovenia. Please turn your cameras on so that we can see your faces on the screen before President Lagarde addresses a few words to you. Okay, this, the, the screen is filling up. There might be a few, a few of your teachers as well yes. with, with the team members. Yes. I'm I thought that a bit yeah. like me, we don't, we don't fit so well. Um, we aspire to uh, look as young as you do, but mm, we don't always manage that. So congratulations to the Slovenia team. Absolutely, Nikla? Nikla? Nikla. Okay. So I understand that one of the members of the team actually just left you and you were not uh, disenchanted, frustrated or furious. You just decided to get on with it and carry on the work. So congratulations for, in the face of that adversity, demonstrate your commitment to complete the project. I think it's, it's really, really good that you did that. I'm told that your school has a very famous theater group, the English Student Theater. I don't know if any of you is a member of, of that, but certainly it's well known. And um, I think you were asked what you, uh, what you had enjoyed most about the competition. And you said, oh, it's a meeting with, with the president of the ECB. So I'm pleased that we can organize that. I hope that next time around, we'll be able to meet in person because it's, uh, it's nice to be on screen together and the picture will stay with us. But um, being together in real life is, uh, is something that maybe we can long for. And uh, you have a stunning invitation, all of you, by the way, to come and vi visit the ECB next year when things are a bit more settled and we can, uh, we can actually conduct business uh, with more physical presence. But congratulations for the, uh, for the good work and, the, uh, and getting to, to the top as you have. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, President Lagarde. And let's hope that that can happen soon. Before moving on with the team picture this time, I'd like to ask Deputy Governor Dolenz if he maybe wants to also give a few remarks to the students. Yes, well, uh, a lot has been said before by President Lagarde. So she, she demonstrated her uh, CCC concept uh, and this was really an excellent demonstration of how our team uh, uh, responded uh, to our, to our uh, questions and tasks and how they will respond in the future. So I cannot add anything to that. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm happy that each year we, get, we give, uh, we send uh, a winning team to ECB and each, each year a winning team is better. So uh, I'm sure that next generations, generations that will come will be smart, uh, brave and prepared to take, to take future action, action. So we don't have any fear to our, uh, to our future, uh, future generations. And I'm, I'm glad that, uh, that uh, we, are, we are part of this uh, competition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much to all of you as well. And let's now take the team picture in three, two, one. Thank you.
Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Let's move on to our next team. We are very close to the end, but first we need to congratulate the members of the Sam Kobe Diepki team from Slovakia. Please turn all your cameras on. I see. Wow. There they are. It's great that you're all on one, one part of the screen. Fantastic. So congratulations uh, to the whole team, Samkove Djetki from Slovakia. Uh, I think the name means Sam's kids. Correct me if that's wrong. No, it's right. Okay. So this is to honor your classmate, Sam. Where is Sam? There you are. Okay. Uh, because I'm told that you won the competition uh, two years ago and uh, you were an inspiration to your friends and uh, they decided to follow uh, in your uh, in your footprints and I think that's fantastic that you could do that and I hope that each and every one of you will actually inspire others after you to do the same and that you will really have a tradition of competing uh, going for the best and winning if you can it's it's really a tribute to uh, to your success Sam terrific um, what I'm also told is that you are not afraid of risk because I understand that you send your video exactly one minute before the deadline and you did so not because you were late, but just for the thrill of it, just to experience. So <laughs> it's to, to, to have the a taste for risk is certainly a, a good thing, actually. That's my personal uh, assessment. So well done and congratulations again to all of you. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you, thank you, well done. And good that in the end, the video made it through so that we are here to celebrate. Uh, let's indeed take our team picture now in three, two, one. Thank you, thank you. And now last but definitely not least, let's meet our last winning team coming from Finland, the Baltic bankers, also joined by Mr. Balimaki from Finland's bank. Please turn your cameras on so that we can see you all on the screen. I see it filling up. Wow. Well, congratulations to Team Baltic Bankers from Finland. I think you're called Baltic Bankers because you come from the Allens Islands which is in the middle of the Baltic Sea. Is that correct? So um, what I'm also told is that many of you actually think that after high school, when, uh, when you are prepared to pick and choose which, uh, which study you want to focus on, many of you actually want to study economics uh, and that this competition has, has led you in that direction and you found it so uh, interesting and uh, and rewarding um, in terms of intellectual discovery and, and process that you want to pursue that. And it's great because as I said in my opening remarks, uh, we need smarty pants like you uh, to take the baton and continue the race uh, in order to better understand our economies and make sure that people uh, can have an improved life. Um, Thanks to your efforts. So congratulations and all the best in, in your journey. Thank, Thank you. you very Thanks. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You too. Thank you. Thanks a lot to all the teams. It's great to see that we have so many bright future economists in the room. Um, it has been really good, nice to put faces into all of you. And now before we close the event, I would like to give President Lagarde once again the chance to take the floor and address a few no, uh, final... No, we have to take a photo, don't forget. Oh, sorry. Sorry, my mistake. Apologies. Sorry. Let's take the team picture now, indeed. In three, two, one. There you go. So sorry about that. And thanks for the reminder. Thank you. And congratulations once again to all the teams. I can only reiterate what has already been said. 
Thank you and congratulations on this great achievement. As I was saying earlier, unfortunately, the session is coming to an end, but I wouldn't want to close it before giving the floor once again to President Lagarde for her final remarks to all of you. I, I don't have much by way of final remarks because we're running out of time. I have to go to another meeting, but it was a, a very, very uh, special moment for me because what you have achieved, the determination and resilience that you've demonstrated, the intellectual capital that you've generated, and the spirit of competition, to me, is uh, an indication that what we're doing here is not in vain. It's for you, uh, you your pals, uh, your team uh, players and leaders that we are trying to deliver on our mandate, do what we can as an institution in order to strengthen uh, Europe and to continue to feed this European spirit, uh, which is so necessary in, in the world uh, with the right focus on the values that we respect in Europe. So thank you for carrying the torch. Thank you for continuing that, that journey with us, with us. As I said, all of you are invited whenever the situation improves and you can be visitors to the ECB, we'd love to give you a little tour of the institution. And if I'm in town and around, I'll be very happy to um, not, not shake hand because we'll try not to do that, but bunch our elbows uh, to, uh, to better be acquainted. All the best to all of you and thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks to you for your time, President Lagarde. But for the rest of the students on the line, this doesn't have to be the end yet. Right after the session, if you want to stay online for a little bit longer, you will have the chance to join one of our breakout rooms. If you want to see where they are, just go down and on the right corner of your Zoom screen and you will see the breakout rooms icon. If you press, you will be able to see all the available rooms. In one of them, you will have the opportunity to talk and interact with all the other teams from across Europe. You can also do that via the chat function. And in the second room, you will have the unique opportunity to post questions and talk to all the national central banks representatives joining us here today. So I really encourage you to take this opportunity to further interact with all your colleagues and national central banks representatives that have also been a key part of this, of this competition that we are celebrating here today. Beyond that and beyond this session, if you want to stay connected with us and also with the GESA competition, I encourage all of you to follow us on social media and use the hashtag Generation Euro. As mentioned, it was a pleasure seeing all your faces today and hearing from you. And once again, congratulations, the best of luck in all your future endeavors. Thanks a lot. And I wish for you to stay safe and healthy. Thank you.